So today, let's start at the tops of our mats in mountain pose. So we're just starting by bringing the big toes together and the heels slightly apart here. We would just want to start building from the ground up. So we're going to ground the feet into the mat, have a little bit of a bend in the knees here so that we're not locking them out. And we're going to stack the hips over the heels. And then let's maybe do a big shoulder roll. We take the shoulders and roll them back and let the shoulder blades slide back and down. Palms facing forward. Tuck the chin in slightly here so that the crown of the head is stacked over the shoulders, over the hips. And then let's come into our ujjayi breathing. So if you'd like, you can just start with a deep sigh. In through the nose, out through the mouth. And then just breathing in and out through the nose here. Constricting the back of the throat just a little bit so that you can feel the vibration as you breathe in your throat. Nice. And then let's pull that belly button into the spine so that we have all the abs engaged here and we're protecting the spine. And on your next inhale, we're gonna bring the arms up and over. Take your right hand and grab your left wrist. And on your next exhale, melt toward your right. One more breath here. Next inhale, come back up to center, grab the opposite wrist, melt toward your left. One more breath. Inhale, coming back to center. And then bring the arms down so that you look like a cactus. You want those elbows bent, nice. On an inhale, lean back just with your upper back. A little stretch across the front of your clavicle here, across the chest. All right, bring this back up. Exhale as the arms come down to the side. So now we're gonna bring this down into a forearm plank just to get everything fired up on the upper body. So on an inhale, reach up and over. Exhale, bending from the waist, bending the knees as much as you need to. And before we transition into our plank, let's hang out in a ragdoll first. So we're really pressing those feet into the mat here. The head is hanging heavy, and we're grabbing opposite elbows. And if it feels nice, you can even sway side to side. Really keep that belly button pulled in here so that we're not pulling on the lower back. So I come back to stillness. We're going to plant the hands in front of us on the mat, step the feet back, and then slowly just drop it down to the knees. And then we'll bring it down to our forearms. Let's first make sure that our shoulders are stacked over our elbows, and then grab opposite elbows to make sure that they're the correct distance apart. And then we're going to extend the arms out straight in front of us. If you'd like, you can just stay here in a plank on your knees, but if you want a little extra challenge and you really want to get those shoulders fired up, take the feet all the way to the back of the mat and come into a full plank. So try not to collapse down into the ligaments. Try to really press the forearms into the mat and separate the shoulders apart from each other. Three breaths here. Last one. All right, exhale. Bring the knees back down to the mat and bring the torso down to the mat as well. We're gonna do some cobra push-ups from here. 
Again, getting that chest just fired up. So to do our Cobra push-ups, we're down on the mat and we're pressing the tops of our shins into the mat. We're placing our hands directly beneath our shoulders. Elbows are facing toward the back of the room. And then on an inhale, I want you to just lightly press the hands into the mat and lift the shoulders off of the mat. Exhale, bring it all the way down. Inhale, lift up again, light pressure in the hands, mostly using the upper body for strength here. Exhale, down. Last one, inhale, lift the chest. And then exhale, bring this all the way down. We're gonna transition this into a puppy pose just to get a nice stretch. So we're pressing the hands into the mat, lifting up the torso. We're gonna begin by stacking the hips over the knees and then slowly begin to melt the chest down toward your mat and let your forehead rest on your mat with the arms extended out in front of you. Excellent. So coming out of this, we're gonna Bring the hands beneath our shoulders, press up, and walk this out to a tabletop. Let's make sure that we have all of the joints stacked over joints. We have elbows over wrists, knees over, or knees beneath the hips here. And then let's do some cat cows to get the spine to wake up. So on an inhale, we're dropping the chest and belly, taking the chin towards the sky. And on an exhale, let's go the opposite direction. Inhale back into your cow. And exhale into cat. Just follow your own breath here. Take the time with us. Let the spine wake up. And feel free to maybe sway the hips side to side. Do some figure eights. Whatever feels right to you. All right, come back to stillness and find a neutral spine. Let's transition this into a downward facing dog. So on an inhale, curl those toes under and send the hips up to the ceiling, really pressing the thumb and index finger into the mat here, bending the knees as much as you need so that you can melt your heart back toward your thighs. Really think about trying to create um, or try to puff up the space in between your shoulder blades here. And then feel free to walk this out, just bending one knee and then the other. Telling those hamstrings to wake up and get ready. Remember to keep the belly button pulled in tight here. I know that we're kind of hanging out using our arms to, to support ourselves, but we really want that belly button pulled in tight. Taking the gaze to the belly button. All right. Coming back to stillness here, on your next inhale, look in between your hands. As you exhale everything out, squeeze your right knee up into your belly, and then plant your right foot in between your hands. We're going to come up into a warrior one on the right hand side. So rotate the heel of that left foot down, square the hips to the top of the mat. On an inhale, come up with a flat back, arms up and over. Remember to relax the shoulders here. Deep breathing. So right now, what you're thinking about is you're focusing on elongating along the back part of your left leg here. And as you limber up, as you begin to stretch out, that will allow you to square the hips even more to the top of your mat, bringing the left hip over here. On an inhale, let's take this into a warrior two. So the left foot becomes parallel to the back of the mat, we've still got that big bend in that right knee. Our gaze is going to go over our right middle finger. And then here, what we're thinking about is lifting the arch of that left foot by pressing the left pinky toe into the mat. 
We're thinking about telling that right knee to open up as much as we can. We're trying to tell it to go toward that right pinky toe. On an exhale, we're gonna windmill the arms, frame your right foot, step back to the back of the mat, and hold a plank here. You are welcome to drop down to your knees for this. Really press the fingers into the mat. Excellent. Let's turn this into a side plank. So make sure we got that right shoulder stacked over the right wrist. And whenever you're ready, bring your weight onto your right side. Stacking left shoulder over right. Nice. If you're doing a half plank like me, send the right foot back to the back of you. Left foot stays on the mat. Exhale this left hand back down to the mat. And on an inhale, curl the toes under, send the hips up to the ceiling, coming back into downward facing dog. Take three slow breaths here. Alrighty, on that next inhale, look in between your hands, squeeze the left knee as you exhale up into your belly, plant the left foot in between the hands. We're coming up into a warrior one, so rotate the heel of that right foot down, really press both of the feet into the mat on your inhale, coming up with a flat back. Nice. Shoulders relaxed, and we're working on slowly getting those hips to square toward the top of the mat. The more you bring that right hip forward, the more you're gonna feel that stretch along the right back part of your leg, especially on the calf here. If you're and having any issues with balance, really try to press the feet into the mat, going opposite directions here. All right, inhale, open this up to your warrior two. Right foot is now parallel to the back of the mat. Open up the heart to the right hand side. Lift the arch of the right foot. And gradually work on trying to get that left knee to go towards your left pinky toe. May not happen at first, but that's okay. All right, on your next exhale, windmill the arms. Plant the hands, framing that left foot. Step back here and come into your version of plank. I'm dropping it down to my knees today. You're welcome to do the same thing. Just make sure that the shoulders are stacked over the wrists here. Belly button is pulled in tight. Make sure there's some wiggle jiggle in those elbows. Try not to lock them out. Beautiful, just like last time, let's turn this into a side plank. Make sure that everything's stacked nicely and then bring the weight into the left arm opening up the heart toward the right hand side, stacking the right shoulder over left. Keep breathing, make sure that there's a wiggle jiggle left in that left elbow. Exhale the right hand down to the mat. Curl the toes under on an inhale and send those hips up to the sky. Ooh, take three slow breaths here. Pull the belly button back into the spine if we've lost it here. All right, inhale. Look in between your hands. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. We're just gonna do it a little bit faster. So exhale, plant your right foot in between your hands. Rotate the heel of the left foot down. On your next inhale, come up into your warrior one. If you can get those hips square, really feel that stretch along the back left leg. And inhale, open this up to warrior two. Left foot is parallel to the back of the mat, gaze is over that right middle finger, chest is rotated toward the left hand side. Nice, y'all. Exhale, windmill those arms, plant the hands, step the feet back. Feel free to drop it down to the knees. And also, if your wrists are beginning to bother you, you can make fists with your hands and that will help to protect the wrist. All 
Alrighty, side plank. Send that right foot to the back. If you're doing a half plank like me, weight goes into the right arm, the left arm up and over. Really breathe, keep the belly button full. Keep the heels lifted. All right, exhale, let that left hand come down and then sink it back to a child's pose. Bring the hips back toward the heels. Let the forehead rest on the mat. Take several slow breaths here. Get that heart rate to come back down just a little bit. All righty. Hands come beneath the shoulders. Lift yourself up. Walk the hands out. On an inhale, curl the toes under. Come back up into your downward facing dog. Once you get steady and established here, on your next inhale, look in between those hands. On your exhale, squeeze the knee up into the belly, plant that left foot. We're doing a warrior one on the left hand side. So on your next inhale, come up with a flat back. Arms up and over. Good job, Linda. <laughs> I'm only seeing a little bit, but what I see looks good. <laughs> Open this up to your warrior two. Our right foot is now parallel to the back of the mat. Left knee is going toward your left pinky toe. Exhale this down, windmill the arms. Frame that left foot, step it back. If you're like me, drop it down to the knees today. But if not, if you're really wanting that challenge, stay up on the toes. You'll get an extra burn that way. Side plank, so bring the weight into that left hand, stack right shoulder over left. Just a couple of breaths here. Exhale the right hand back down to the mat and just sink it back to a child's pose. Bring the heart rate back down just a little bit. Breathe here. Bring the hands beneath the shoulders, pressing yourself up, walk it out, and then transition this into a downward facing dog. So inhale, toes curl under, press into the mat, hips go to the ceiling. On your next inhale, look in between those hands, exhale everything out as you squeeze the right knee into the belly, plant the right foot in between the hands. We're doing another warrior one on this side, but I promise we're not doing the same sequence. <laughs> so whenever you're ready, on an inhale, really press that right foot into the mat as you come up with a flat back. All right, this time, we're gonna take our right arm and drape it behind us. And this right here may be enough of a stretch for you, but if not, you can gently place your hand on your right elbow and press down, but just until you feel stretch, not until you feel pain. All right, inhale, arms up and over. Next, inhale, open it up to warrior two. So really get your warrior two established here. Get that left pinky toe really pressed into the mat. Feel good about this right leg. Have that right foot really grounded into the mat here. So we're gonna bring this into an extended side angle. So the hips are gonna go back to behind you and you're gonna hinge forward to the waist. Then you're gonna plant that right arm on your right thigh. The left palm is gonna come up and over. Beautiful. If you feel super wobbly here, you can always take the gaze down to the floor so we can feel more stable. But if you feel comfortable, you can either just look straight ahead or you can take your gaze up to the ceiling, whatever works for you. Okay, inhale, press that right big toe in the mat as you come back up into your warrior two. Let's turn this into a triangle. The way we do that is we straighten our right leg. Just like before, we send the hips to the back of the room, then we hinge toward our right foot, and then we teapot down. Gorgeous. With that right hand, you can rest it on the shin, you can rest it on the mat, Ever works for you. If you're in that point where you're not quite down to the mat, 
but you're not really needing to hang on to your shin. You can press the back of your right hand against the inside of your ankle or your shin. That will help with balance. Couple more breaths. Okay, so to get ourselves out of this, let's soften the right knee by bending it. Inhale, bring this back up to your warrior two. Peaceful warrior from here. So we lean back, bring that right arm up and over. You can always lay that left hand on your left thigh if you feel wobbly, but if you want a little challenge, drape your left arm behind you. Excellent. Inhale this back up to your warrior two. On an exhale, I want you to windmill the arms, plant the hand, and just step it back to a downward facing dog. Three slow breaths here. Puff up the space in between your shoulder blades. We do that by pulling them apart away from each other. All right. On your next inhale, look in between those hands. Exhale everything out as you squeeze the left knee into the belly. Plant that left foot in between your hands. Heel of the right foot rotates down. You know what to do on an inhale. Come up with a flat back. Warrior one on the left side. This time we're going to drape the left arm behind us. Again, just start here. See if you need anything. If you're feeling a good stretch back here, you can just hang out there. But if you want a deeper stretch, gently place your right hand on top of your left elbow and press down. For me, this is enough. Keep breathing, in and out through the nose, belly button pulled in tight. All right, on your next inhale, turn this into a warrior two. All right, like before, let's really get established and feel good and balanced here. Really press that right foot toe into the mat, feel good about that left foot. Uh, really press the big toe of the left foot into the mat so that you feel stable here. Let's turn this into the extended side angle. Hips go to the back of the room, hinge forward at the waist, left arm comes to the left thigh, right palm comes up and over. Just like last time, you can always just look straight ahead. If you feel wobbly, look at the mat. If you feel brave and strong, look at the ceiling. Couple more breaths. Excellent. Really press that big toe into the mat as you inhale back up into your warrior two. Whenever you're ready, turn this into a triangle. Straighten the left leg, hips go to the back of the room, hinge forward from the waist, and then teapot down. Like before, the hand can come down to the mat, it can come to your shin, or just press the back of the hand against the side of the shin or the ankle. Really keep that belly button pulled in tight here so that we're protecting the lower back. Try to open up across the chest as much as possible. Elongate the spine here. All right, how are we gonna get out of this? <laughs> we're gonna bend in that left knee. Inhale it up to your warrior two. Let's take this into a peaceful warrior. So that right hand is gonna come down the thigh, the left palm is gonna come up and over as you lean back. Feel free to challenge yourself by draping your right arm behind you. But if you need that security of holding onto your right thigh, go for it. Beautiful. Inhale this back up to the two. On an exhale, windmill the arms, frame that left foot, step it back, hang out in your downward facing dog. If you need even more of a break here, bring it back to a child's pose. Whatever works for you to help get your heart rate down just a little bit. Deep, slow, ujjayi breath. All right, let's get some moving. So on your next inhale, look in between those hands. Exhale everything out as you plant your right foot in between your hands. 
This time we're gonna come up into a crescent lunge. So leave the toes of both feet facing toward the top of the mat. And then lift the left heel just a little bit up off of the mat. So on an inhale, bring yourself up with a flat back, arms up and over. Really feel this stretch along the top of your left back. You're getting into your hip flexors here when you do that. Especially the more that you're able to square those hips toward the top of your mat, the more of a stretch you're gonna feel along that left thigh. All right, friends, bring your hands to your hips. We got a little challenge here. So take your time with this one. So we're gonna transition from crescent into chair. And we can practice this a little bit first if you'd like. So keep those hands on the hips. Try to put some weight into that right leg. And you lift the left leg. Ooh, I'm on a super squishy mat today. <laughs> and then if you're ready, let the left foot meet the right. Keep the tailbone tucked in. Bring the arms up and over. You have found yourself in chair pose. Good job, y'all. Exhale, bring that left leg back. Beautiful. Exhale again, plant the hands, and then feel free to take a vinyasa here if you'd like, or just take it back to down dog. If you choose to take a vinyasa, just exhale all the way down. Inhale as you lift the chest off of the mat, and exhale as you come into your downward facing dog. Take the gaze to the belly button. Take some slow, deep breaths here. Nice. Inhale, look in between the hands. Exhale everything out as you plant the left foot in between the hands. So we're going to do a crescent lunge again. Heel of the right foot is up off the mat. On an inhale, we really press that left foot into the mat as we lift up. So while you're here, you're thinking about those hips. You may start with the hips a little bit rotated to the right, but as you hold this, you're going to find that those muscles are going to release and you can really square those hips to the front of the mat. You're gonna be feeling the stretch along the hip flexors of your right thigh. That's like right where your thigh and your hips meet here. Good job, y'all. All right, here's that challenge. Bring the hands to the hips. We're gonna to try to transition this into a chair pose from here. So maybe take a second, put some weight into that left foot. Practice lifting the right. When you feel ready, bring the right foot forward coming into your chair pose. While you're here, remember to keep that tailbone tucked in. I don't want booty facing out, I want booty facing down. <laughs> okay. Right foot goes back to the back of the mat, take your time, feel balanced. On your next exhale, fold forward. Train that left foot. Feel free to do a vinyasa or just hang out in downward facing dog. If you do take a vinyasa, Remember to keep those elbows facing toward the back of the room. Exhale all the way down. Inhale as you come up. And then exhaling as you come into your downward facing dog. Take slow breaths here. All right, inhale, look in between the hands. As you exhale, squeeze the left knee into the belly. Plant that left foot in between the hands. Keep the hands down on the mat and begin to twist yourself all the way to the right. So hands, body, toes, everything are all coming toward the right-hand side of your mat. Once you kind of get everything facing that way, you've noticed that you have found yourself and a wide leg forward fold here. So we want those toes just slightly outwardly turned. We don't want to look like a ballerina with the toes super outwardly turned. Just a little bit. We're going to add a little bend to the knees here so that we are able to melt our heart back down toward our thighs. And then let your head hang heavy here. 
so that your neck is in line with your spine. And as you're here, begin to try to transition more of the weight into your toes. So ideally, what you want over time is for your hips to be stacked over your heels. If you're anything like me, you've really got tight hamstrings, and that may take a while. So just take your time here. Let everything wake up slowly. All right, next challenge here. We're gonna take those peace fingers, and we're gonna wrap them around our big toes. So point your elbows out to the side like you're trying to show off your big muscles. And even though we're hanging upside down, so our you know, shoulders are kind of melting down to the mat, let's lift them back up and pull them away from our ears. Now, we're really gonna get a deep stretch here. We're gonna gently pull up on our big toes, but then you're gonna press down with your big toes, creating some resistance. It's like tug of war between your toe and your fingers. Excellent. Release your hands, bring them down to your mat and support here, and really pull that belly button in tight. Squeeze the glutes together, press both of your big toes into the mat, bring your hands to your hips, bend at the knees, inhale, slowly, slowly, slowly bring this up, one vertebrae at a time. If you feel wobbly here, if you feel queasy, squeeze the hands. Pump the fist. Nice. I like that one. All right. Let's bring this into a five pointed star. So the legs stay wide, arms come up and over like we're super excited. Nice. I think you'll know what's coming next. So we're going to bend those arms like we're a cactus. We're going to tuck our tailbones forward. Remember, booty's facing down. Whenever you're ready, exhale, sink it down. You're coming into a goddess squat here. Good job. All right, straighten everything back out. Bring the hands to the hips. Rotate those toes back to the top of your mat and just step to the top of your mat. Nice. Then let's inhale, look up, reach up. Exhale, forward fold. Plant the hands, step it back to a downward facing dog just for a moment. And then on your next exhale, bend at the knees here and sink it back to a child's pose. Take some breaths, cool down. All right, before we lose too much of our heat, let's plant our hands beneath our shoulders. Gently, slowly bring yourself back up to a tabletop. From your tabletop, transition into a downward facing dog. Inhale, curl the toes under, press them into the mat, lift those hips. So you got a couple of options here. If you want a little challenge, you can walk the feet toward the hands. But if you're just not feeling that today, Walk the hands back toward the feet. Keep that belly button pulled in. Inhale, slowly roll this up. Nice. Keep some little balances here. So let us start with tree. Um, Y'all know I love to start with that one because it just gets your head kind of wrapped around balancing. So you might want to come off of your mat. If you've got a super squishy mat like I have today, it's going to be much easier to do this on a harder surface. Um, the wall is always going to be your friend. Anything steady, maybe a large piece of furniture, something that you can hang on to. That's really going to help with balance. So let's begin on our left foot. We're going to get that left foot grounded into the mat. Y'all know the way that I like to do it is I like to lift my toes so that I can feel my arch come up off of the mat. I maintain that feeling and then press my toes into the mat. And I'm almost gripping the mat with my toes too. I feel like that helps. We're gonna leave a little bit of wiggle jiggle in the left knee so that we don't block 
it out. Hands can come to the hips at first. And then we decide what we want to do with our right leg. So maybe we want to just start at level one. We keep the toes of the right foot pressed into the mat. The bottom of the foot is pressed to the inside of your ankle. Maybe you're feeling a little bit more brave today. <laughs> I want to bring the bottom of your foot to the inside of your left shin. You can always bring it all the way up to the thigh. We're always going to skip over the knee. Whatever feels good to you today. When you decide where you are going to plant your right foot, then let your branches grow. Let them do whatever they want to do. Make the arms come over. Whatever feels right. Maybe they come to the side. <laughs> maybe you want an extra challenge and maybe you close the eyes. Alrighty, friends, release that right leg with some control. Shake either leg out if you need it. You can even stretch out that left foot. I really feel like this gets into the plantar fascia of the, the foot that's grounded. It's really gripping here. So if you want to stretch that, you can. All right, let's do the same thing on the right side. So we'll ground that right foot into the mat. Leave some bend in the right knee. Hands to the hips. Decide what you want to do with your left foot. Maybe we leave the toes on the ground for support here. Maybe we get brave and decide to bring the foot totally off the mat. Once you get established, let your arms do whatever they want to do. Yay, I have a tree. Yay, I can't see it. <laughs> no, I wish I had the camera on. <laughs> Maybe even try closing your eyes, seeing if you can make ah. it. I oh, know, it makes it so much harder, right? Yes, oh my goodness. So much easier on my right leg than my left, though, that's for sure. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. We always have one stronger side and then one tighter side as well, so I'm not quite sure what the science is behind that, but it's just true. <laughs> or releasing that left leg, if you need to do the elbows, whatever you need to do, shake it out. <laughs> All right, let's get into a slightly tougher balance here. Now our brain, we're ready. We know what we need to do. Um, for this next one, you're welcome to, again, come to a wall where your hands are going to touch the wall or, again, maybe find a sturdy piece of furniture, something really heavy that's stable in front of you. That can be quite helpful. So we're going to begin on our left foot, grounding it into the mat the same way that we did before, making sure that we still got some bend in that left knee. We can start with our hands on our hips here. We're gonna lift the right leg. We're gonna have a strongly flexed right foot. And then we're gonna to begin to lean forward. Try to keep the hips even with the floor beneath you. So you can either come into airplane, which is a little bit easier, where the arms come out to the side, or you can come into warrior three, where the arms come out to the front. This is where you can kind of hang on to a heavy piece of furniture or plant the hands on a wall in front of you. Really keep that right glute super engaged here. Really squeeze it. All right, exhale. Bring that right leg down to the left. Shake it out. Excellent, ladies. Let's do the same thing on the other side. Ground the right foot and move the mat. Have some bend in that right knee. Hands come to the hips. Slowly lift the left leg, strongly flexed left foot. So those toes are pointing down toward the mat. Keep the hips parallel to the floor beneath you. Decide where you want your arms to the side because you're an airplane or your arms out in front of your warrior. Couple more breath. Right, exhale, let the left foot move the right. Shake it out. All right, so now we can come back to our mat. And we're gonna slowly work our way back down to our sit bones. 
So whatever way is safest for you. I like to bend at the waist, plant my hands, then bend my knees, and then bring my hips down. And once you get here, we're gonna to start to set up for reverse table pop. So this one's pretty challenging. Um, it can be a little bit um, demanding on the wrists. So be very careful with this one. Um, we're gonna begin by doing the modified version, which starts with our knees bent and our feet planted into the mat about hip width apart. We want the sides of the feet to be parallel to the sides of the mat. We then bring our hands behind us with the hands stacked directly beneath our shoulders. Whenever you're ready, roll those shoulders forward. This is a little bit counter to what we normally do, but there's a reason for it. So roll those shoulders forward. Keep the chin tucked in, squeeze the glutes, belly button pulled in tight, inhale, lift the hips up to the ceiling. Now, if you don't have any sort of neck injuries or neck surgery, nothing like that, then slowly let the head drape backwards. Keep some bend in those elbows, never, never lock out a joint. We do not want arthritis. That's hard to say with your head upside down. <laughs> All right, y'all. Tuck the chin into the chest. Slowly lower those hips down. Whew, whatever you need here. Maybe you just need some shoulder rolls. Yeah, it's really hard to say osteoarthritis with your head. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's be done with that. Let's transition into bridge pose. So we're going to slowly bring our backs down onto the mat, pull that belly button in. If you'd like, you can use hands for support here, or like Jennifer says, get that abs extra credit, keeping the chin tucked into the chest as we come down one vertebrae at a time. Ha, huh. nice. So continuing to set up for this, we're going to inch the feet back toward our torso. And when we extend our arms out, we are able to fill the backs of our heels with our fingertips. Feet are parallel to the sides of the mat and feet are hips width apart. And we are going to also think about shimmying those shoulder blades together beneath you. That opens you up across your chest here. Whenever you're ready, squeeze the glutes, Pull the belly button into the spine. Inhale, press the feet into the mat as you slowly lift your hips up to the ceiling. You should be feeling a stretch across those hip flexors. And hopefully your glutes are saying some things to you right now as well. The front of my thighs. You feel what? The fronts of my thighs. <laughs> yes, yes, good point. If you'd like to take this a little bit deeper here, you can bring your hands beneath you with your arms extended outward. Interlace those fingers, press your forearms into the mat, and notice how that lifts you up just a little bit higher. And you're not just lifting straight up, you're lifting up and pushing your hips back toward your chin. Couple more breaths. Excellent. Release the hands if you did that. Lift the feet up onto their toes. Slowly roll the spine down one vertebrae at a time. When the hips come down to the mat, that's when the feet can come down flat. Any release that you need here that feels good, maybe squeezing those knees into the chest, maybe swaying the knees side to side. Excellent. All right, so let's get some cool down stretches in. So since we're already on our back, let's just go ahead and start with reclining twists. So for this, the feet are planted into the mat. We let our knees fall away from us toward the right hand side. 
The left side of the hip is going to come up off the mat. That's okay. We don't want the left shoulder, however, to come off the mat. We want to keep that press down into the mat so that we don't cheat ourselves out of this really good spinal twist. So now that you've found the pose, decide what you need. Maybe that twist is too deep. And if so, maybe grab a throw blanket or a, a couch pillow beneath your right leg. And that'll keep you from twisting too far. But maybe you're feeling really bendy today. And if that's the case, take your right ankle, cross that right leg over the left, and plant your right ankle on the outside of your left thigh. It's going to add some weight to that left leg. And you'll really feel a stretch on the outside of your left hip. That's your IT band. If you want to really complete this spinal twist, take the gaze over the left shoulder. But keep in mind, if you've ever had a neck injury or surgery or anything, you might just want to keep the gaze up to the ceiling. Keep the belly button pulled in tight here, even though we're cooling down. And keep up that Ujjayi breathing, too. Inhale, the knees back to center. Bring the gaze back to center. You can get the spine straightened out here. Whenever you're ready, transition to the next side. Let the knees fall to the left this time. Keep that right shoulder planted into the mat. Decide what you need. Maybe you need to add a throw blanket on the outside of your left leg or a pillow. Maybe you want a deeper stretch by crossing your left leg over your right, planting your left ankle on the outside of your right thigh. And if you'd like, you can take that gaze over the right shoulder. Enjoy some Ujjayi breathing here. Uncross the leg if you've got it crossed. Inhale, the knees to center. Bring the gaze back to center. And then maybe let's come into a happy baby. You can either just squeeze the knees into the chest or you can take a happy baby if that feels good. Really try to elongate the spine by keeping that tailbone pressed into the mat, bending the knees, opening the legs wider than the torso. We grab the feet from the outside, pinky toe side. If that's too much, though, we can always just grasp the backs of the thighs. Really, I want you to more so focus on elongating the spine by pressing the lower back and tailbone into the mat here. And if it feels good, maybe we rock this side to side. Releasing this, we're going to slowly work our way back up to a seated pose. Uh, again, if you want those abs extra credit, you can press the feet into the mat really tuck the chin in and come straight up, but if that's too much, it's okay just to roll to the side and press yourself up with your hand. All right, we did so much with our legs today, so let's be kind to them and cool them down here. So we're gonna begin with cobbler's pose, and that begins with us grounding our sit bones into the mat, even if we have to get some junk out of the way here. Let the soles of the feet touch each other. And slowly work on opening up those feet like the pages of the book so that just the pinky toes are touching. That's going to help extend the stretch. And just like with any other pose, if you need to add some maybe little pillows or something on the outside if you need here to keep this from opening up too much, you always can. And then we're thinking about really elongating that spine, sitting up tall, tucking the chin in, but pretending like there's a rope pulling you up from the crown of your head here. On your next exhale, you're going to pull forward from the waist, keeping your back flat. And then keep the hands on the mat for support if you'd like. They can be beside your hips, they can be next to your feet. I'm just focusing on stretching out the hips here. Inhale, roll this up. Nice. 
Then we're going to come into drag and fly. Feet come into a wide, or legs come into a wide V shape. Toes are pointed toward the ceiling. We're going to keep a bend in those knees so that we protect those joints. Sitting up tall, just like we did before. And then on your next exhale, leaning forward, keeping that chin tucked in. So what that's doing is keeping your neck in line with your spine. Because we want to jut that chin forward. It's very tempting to, it feels like we're elongating more, but <laughs> we're just bending our neck is all we're doing. So keep that chin tucked in. And just go as far as you can. It's not a race, it's not a challenge. All we're doing is just cooling the muscles down. Inhale, roll it up here. Nice. Now let's extend the legs in front of us coming into staff. Just like with every other pose, toes go to the ceiling, keep a bend in the knees, plant the hands in the mat beside you, sit up tall. So this one is the most challenging one for me to keep a flat back. So I do recommend putting some sort of a blanket or a pillow beneath your bottom here. That helps to straighten you out a little bit. And then whenever you're ready, belly button into spine, exhale, come forward with a flat back. And you'll notice I don't go very far. So again, just go as far as you need to go. Your body is going to tell you when to stop and that's okay. It's a good thing. Do not want anybody leaving class with a popped hamstring. That's just that's too much. <laughs> Excellent. Roll this up slowly on an inhale. And then whenever you're ready, let's bring it down into our final resting pose. Shavasana, the one that we all came for. <laughs> Open up those legs, wide as your mat. Slowly bring the spine down, one vertebrae at a time. Ah, shimmy the shoulder blades together beneath you. Let the palms face upward. And if you're feeling any lower back pain, maybe grab a pillow or maybe a couch cushion, something kind of firm that you can place beneath your knees or behind your knees. That'll help to press your lower back down into the mat and flatten it out. That'll feel nice. Okay. And now is the time to let go of that Ujjayi breathing. You don't have to think about your breathing anymore. Just enjoy your own natural breathing pattern. I like to begin by doing a full body scan. I start at my pose and I work my way up slowly toward the crown of my head. And as I'm scanning, I'm telling each body part to release, to relax, and to soften. Feel free to just surrender here. Be confident knowing that you're not going to fall, that the ground has you totally supported. Also allow the mind to relax. Be aware that thoughts and ideas will come to mind but we are not obligated to explore any of those thoughts. We can just politely pat them on their head and send them on their way.
Begin to bring back your awareness. Begin awakening the body with small mindful movements, starting with fingers and toes. Begin to draw circles with your hands and feet. Taking a full body stretch, deepening your breath here. even hugging the knees into the chest, continuing to deepen our breathing. Whenever you're ready, rolling onto one side. Deep breath. The heart rate is really low from being on the mat for a while. On your next inhale, press it up, come up to your seated pose. All right, ladies, thank you so, so much for joining me today and trying out this totally new style <laughs> of practicing together. We truly appreciate it. And thank you so much for letting me be part of your self-care routine. Namaste.